The Bitcoin market's exploding. We hit three all-time highs yesterday. Literally, can't stop, won't stop. Bitcoin is only going one direction. We're in a bull market. What does that mean? Boop, boop, boop. Price going up. All right, $66,921 this morning, up over 2%. 2% is now literally $1,200, $1,300 at a time. Eventually, I anticipate that we will start to see $5,000 daily moves and then eventually $10,000 daily moves. That's both up and down. It's a highly volatile asset measured in U.S. dollar terms. But yesterday, up big and hitting three all-time highs. S&P, basically flat, gold, silver, euro, yen, renminbi, oil, who cares? Nobody is looking at those trash assets. On top of that, if we go and we look at the market cap, Bitcoin now is pretty comfortably a $1.25 trillion asset. We are knocking on the door. You can hear us. We're knocking on the door of silver. Silver's about $1.35 trillion. Bitcoin, we're knocking right on the door, 1.26 trillion. On top of that, you can see the settlement volume yesterday was off the freaking charts. Almost $30 billion of Bitcoin on-chain settlement volume. That is monster numbers. That starts putting us up in the six, seven, eight, nine trillion dollars of annualized uh, actual volume. When you start getting up to those numbers, you start knocking on the door of Visa and MasterCard and how much transaction volume they do on an annual basis. The real exchange volume, 7.6 billion. And then active addresses sitting comfortably about a million active addresses per day. Now, the mining reward. This is how much money the miners were paid in the last 24 hours to secure the Bitcoin network, $61.8 million. The reason why this is important is because as the price of Bitcoin continues to go up, that U.S. dollar amount will continue to go up as well. They're getting the same Bitcoin, but the Bitcoin is worth more in U.S. dollar terms. And so quite literally, more and more miners will continue to come onto the network, all competing for that $61.8 million that was paid out in the last 24 hours. That means that the economic incentive is driving the Bitcoin network to become more decentralized and more secure over time. As Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger both say, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcome. There is an economic incentive for more people to secure the Bitcoin network and to continue to make it more resilient to any sort of external attack. We go ahead and we look at Bitcoin, the S&P, and gold, all compared side by side over the years. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is an absolute massacre. That is Definitely the term that you should use. Bitcoin up 340% year over year. Gold is down 4% in nominal terms. Gold is down over 9% in real return basis. Now, the S&P up 32%. But what is so fascinating is quite literally, Bitcoin has performed 10x better than the S&P 500 over the last year. If you were sitting in cash last year and you decided to go into the benchmark of the U.S. stock market and buy the S&P 500, that was great. You made 32 times your or 32 percent more of your money. But if instead you had went and bought Bitcoin, you would have literally more than tripled your money and 10x outperformed your neighbor who simply bought the S&P 500. That is what we call opportunity costs. So Bitcoin continuing to be the apex predator of financial markets. It's big enough at over a trillion dollars now for people to allocate large sums of money. And we will likely continue to see exactly what people are going to do there. Now, when we go ahead and we look at the Bitcoin price and closing history, there's only one day ever that Bitcoin's price has been higher than it is right now. And that day was yesterday. So literally every single person who has bought Bitcoin on any day since January 3rd, 2009, all the way up till today, any day that you bought Bitcoin, if you held it till today, there's only one day where you would be under in terms of the US dollar value. And that day was yesterday. So if you didn't buy Bitcoin yesterday, you have more purchasing power today than you've ever had because Bitcoin has only ever been higher since yesterday. And that is why this asset is structurally designed to continue to protect your purchasing power or increase it. Now, when we go and we look at Bitcoin, gold, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and TLT, what you see is the ROI in uh, the one-year basis, you can see it right there in the middle, 340% or so, is absolutely trouncing any other type of asset, including uh, gold and TLT both being down materially in nominal basis. Then if you go out and you look at the CAGR, the compound annual growth rate on a 10-year basis, the compound annual growth rate for the last decade of Bitcoin, as we stand right now, it's 172%. That is absolutely bonkers. I don't think we've seen an asset that has grown like that, that is over a trillion dollars in a very long time, if ever. 
I think this is probably the first time in history we have had an asset that is over 150% compound annual growth rate for a decade and also over a trillion dollars where institutions can actually start to allocate to it. That, my friends, is very, very important. If we then go ahead and we look, Willy Woo coming out with this contour map. And what I love about this map is that it shows that every Bitcoin at the price that they were last changed hands between investors. The huge price validation between fifty dollars and $60,000 is likely to cement Bitcoin as a trillion-dollar asset class, regardless of what you think. When you look at this data, it is simply showing that there is immense support right around that $1 trillion mark, which is fifty dollars to $60,000 Bitcoin price. So today we sit $66,000, $67,000. It's going to be hard to see a world where we dip back way below $50,000 ever again. Never say never, but there is lots and lots of data points that are suggesting there is great buying interest right around that $1 trillion mark. And so if we ever dip back down there, expect people to be gobbling up as much Bitcoin as they possibly can. On top of that, we've got the young wizard, Will Clemente. In the last four months, over 200,000 Bitcoin have been moved off exchanges, according to Glassnode. That's equivalent to about $12.5 billion at current prices. This is another regime of outflows illustrating a broader shift in dynamics for the Bitcoin market after March of 2020. So when we look at this, Obviously, everyone is very excited. Bitcoin hitting three all-time highs yesterday. What do we think ends up being the current state here? We have Dylan uh, LeClaire from Bitcoin Magazine coming on in a little bit. Dylan is going to come on, and he's going to drop absolute bombs in terms of market structure. But what do you guys think of the Bitcoin market right now uh, and kind of how to think about uh, what some of these data points are showing us? Well, I think s certainly when we talked about earlier, when we started the show, it was around 30,000 or whatever. And we've seen over the last few months, like that supply squeeze has been building up. Will talks about it every week. Dylan has come on and they've talked about it. And when you really just look at the fundamentals, right, the 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 fact that 90% of all Bitcoin that will ever be in existence is currently in existence, the rest of the 10% or less than 10% at this point of time uh, won't be, won't finish coming into existence until, you know, 120 more years, 2140, I believe it is. And then 85% of the existing supply and circulation right now has been held for 90 days or longer. So just on simple supply and demand economics is telling you that this price has to go higher as more demand comes in, right? And it feels like every single day we're seeing more demand come in, whether it's simple things, right? Tim Cook said this morning, a deal book that we're going to talk about later, that he owns Bitcoin and Ethereum and other crypto, or, or he owns Bitcoin and Ethereum, and he sees it as part of his diversified portfolio. So there, th that's an easy one. Then there's countries buying Bitcoin. There's a bunch of different things, right? The mayors, uh, government officials are all competing uh, to see who can take more of their paycheck in Bitcoin. So when it comes to demand, like we're seeing more and more of that every day. And when you only have to worry about one side of the equation, it makes it much, much easier to think about. 200K. Coins have been moved off exchanges. Correct. We've been talking about the supply squeeze. It looks to be coming into fruition. Um, it's exciting. Adoption is moving rapidly. Companies are getting involved. Individuals are getting involved. The supply is fixed. Price has to go up to accommodate that. This is exactly what kind of people were talking about during the summer. Q4 is here, and uh, it's looking good for Bitcoin.